Hey guys, welcome back to Mad About Skin. You might have heard the news that The Ordinary are discontinuing some of their skincare products. This has sent fans into a frenzy, with people worrying that their personal favourites are going to fall foul of this call and they'll no longer be able to use them. Well, in this video, I want to break it all apart. We're going to share which products will be being phased out over time, some of the reasons behind that, and what might be coming in the future to replace them. This way, as consumers, we know exactly where we stand when it comes to shopping the ordinary, the products that are in, and the products that are out. Sit back, relax, let's talk discontinued the ordinary products. Now, before we get into this video, I would love to know what your thoughts, feelings, and opinions are on everything we're talking about in today's video. Is one of your personal favourites impacted? Do you think, honestly, all of this is a bit overblown because actually the products that are discontinuing whenever your favourites anyway? Let me know in the comments section below and let's get that conversation going. If you enjoy this style of content where we talk about, you know, the latest news in skincare and do a bit of a deep dive into those new stories, let me know by giving the video a big thumbs up and a like. This honestly supports me as a content creator so much, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you all. Now, without further ado, let's cut that waffle and delve straight on in. So, The Ordinary have been, to be fair to them, very transparent about the products which are going to be impacted, and they've also kind of set up a separate section on their website, um, highlighting which have been discontinued, and giving fairly decent discounts on those products to sell through the stock. Now, I applaud this for a couple of reasons. First of all, we love transparency. I love it when a brand is just able to say, look, this is what's going to happen. And as consumers, we know. In the past, The Ordinary haven't always been that transparent. You know, products have randomly disappeared or been out of stock for three years. And we've kind of all known that they've basically been discontinued, but they've never actually come out and said that. Well, I'm glad that The Ordinary have taken on board that feedback and they are now being fully transparent with this, which is a huge tick in the box. I also like the fact that they're selling through their existing stock. You know, a lot of brands will, rather than discount their stock, just send it to landfill, get rid of it, write it off and move on. And whilst that might protect the brand and their price point, it's horrendous when it comes to waste and also us guys missing out on a good deal. So I love the fact that The Ordinary are fully transparent and they're being really generous in terms of some of the discounts and letting us buy the products rather than just scrapping them completely. This still, though, won't please those who, you know, some of their favourites might be impacted. So in this section of the video, let's just quickly talk about the products that are impacted, some of the reasons why, and then later on in the video, I'm going to be talking about some developments that are coming down the line. Now, The Ordinary have gone from quite a stagnant phase when it came to product development to going into overdrive. We had about two years where we didn't really have a new product from The Ordinary, and people were questioning why. Now, we've had a flurry of new products, and a lot of them have been amazing. From their Aloe Serum, which is phenomenal, through to their Pink Serum, the Calming and Soothing Barrier Support one, which people absolutely love. I think a lot of their latest launches really have hit the mark and people are really excited again for kind of what's next when it comes to The Ordinary. Of course, when you own a brand, you know, like The Ordinary, you have to take a look at your entire collection and think, what's selling? What's not selling? What do we want to keep? What do we want to get? It's not always as simple as just adding new products. You know, sometimes the old ones have to be retired, but there's always been a controversy that happens around that. I have taken a look at the products that are going to be discontinued and most of them are pretty low down when it comes to their best-selling products. A lot of them either had their popularity at one point but people have moved on or never really had that huge fan base in the first place. Um, let me know though if you disagree with that. So let's kick things off with the ordinary vitamin C 30% in silicon. Now this used to be super popular because I think it was like the highest strength vitamin C you could get. Certainly here in the UK it was the highest vitamin C you could get. Uh, we definitely in our minds back like three years ago were like the higher the concentration the better the results. Now I think we all understand that using a product consistently that has a lower concentration is actually going to give you better results than using one with a high concentration that's stripping and drying and damaging your skin. And so a lot of people started to take a look at products like this 30% vitamin C from The Ordinary and think, yeah, maybe I just don't need that. Maybe it's not doing my skin a whole lot of good. I'll be better going for a 15%, which is kind to my skin and gives me some great long-term benefits. So the sales of this product have definitely fallen off. And I think the fact that it often balled up, people didn't have the best user and application experience, means just another reason that a lot of people moved on. 
This definitely is one of their lowest selling vitamin C's, so it doesn't surprise me that they've moved on from this. And the good news is, if you're looking for an alternative, if this is one of your favorites, and you're looking for an alternative, they are still keeping the high strength vitamin C in hyaluronic acid in their collection, so you could just switch to that. It applies better, I think it feels better on the skin, and has a slightly lower concentration, so it's a little bit kinder to the skin too. I'm not surprised that this is going in. If the auditor said to me, what one product would you discontinue? It probably would be this one because I think the risk of overdoing it with this is far too high versus the benefits you're going to get. Now, they're discontinuing a couple of their facial oils too. Now, the ordinary facial oils were really well priced for the fact that a lot of them were organic, cold pressed. So you got high quality oils at a much lower price than what a lot of other brands were charging. However, Facial oils, particularly single facial oils, have still still remain to be quite a niche segment of the skincare market. There are people out there, and let me know if you're one of them in the comments, who would never be without their facial oil. But a lot of people either go for a blend of different oils, or they just do without oils completely. Now, I personally do like a facial oil in my evening skincare routine, but I do, again, tend to go for blends of different oils to maximise the benefit. And so I think these ordinary oils, whilst they're well priced, and whilst they're certainly, the extraction processes are really great, I, I'm just not sure that really there was ever going to be a big enough market to make this pay. The best selling oils from the ordinary are the rosehip seed oil, which everybody loves rosehip seed oil. It's getting a lot of viral attention and hype at the moment because it works universally for every skin type and has some great benefits. They also do really well in terms of sales of their bee oil, which is kind of innovative. It's different. We're talking about those blends that we spoke about earlier that are really popular. Again, a really well formulated and good selling product from the ordinary. There's other oils that they're retiring and will be discontinuing have never been their best sellers. The first one to go is the borage seed oil. Again, this was, yeah, <laughs> this was never it. it. It's fine as an oil, it works, but it didn't have as many benefits as some of the other oils on the market, so it was a harder sell. Also had a really unique, let's say, if I'm being kind, I'm going to call it a unique scent, which a lot of people to actually write into the order and say, is this rancid? Because it smells like that. And they actually had to put a disclaimer on their website saying, just because it smells rancid doesn't mean it does, that's its natural scent. Um, this is actually going for £5 here in the UK. It's a lovely facial oil. If you don't mind the scent, it's a lovely facial oil. Really inexpensive. So I would say shop it, buy it while you can. Add a couple of drops of it into your moisturiser. Great for hydration. I just don't think many people could get over the scent of it, which is why it never caught on. But for £5, if you can get over the scent, this is a real budget-friendly facial oil that is beautifully cold-pressed and such a great find. The chia seed oil has also been discontinued. Again, I think for a lot of the same reasons. Whilst it didn't have that slightly overbearing scent to it that the borage one did, um, it definitely just didn't have the multitude of benefits that you get from, say, rosehip seed oil. So people just didn't reach for it and choose it. Now, I don't think it's a terrible product at all. Chia seed is great. Universal works for everyone. But there are other oils that I think just offer be greater benefits. If you like a bargain and you want to shop this while it's on sale, great. Again, like I said with that borage one, just drop a few drops of it into your moisturiser, ramp up the, you know, amp up the hydration levels that you're going to see. But again, it was a hard sell for the ordinary. Not surprised it's going. And finally, when it comes to the oils, the sea buckthorn oil is being discontinued. Now, this will shock a lot of people because this actually did have a cult following. I didn't like it because it was ridiculously coloured. And it's the natural colour, but it stained everything from your pillows to your hairline to everything got stained with this. Um, and I tried it because Sincerely Miss Ash, who's one of my favourite content creators here on YouTube, I'll leave a link actually to her um, channel below. She's actually just crossed 100,000 subscribers and I couldn't be happier for her. She is one of the best content creators and I'm absolutely delighted. So check out her channel. Um, but she actually got me onto this and said how much she loved it. I tried it and my skin adored it. Like hydrated like no other oil. It calmed, it soothed. It, it, it just did everything I wanted a facial oil to do. But because it was so vibrantly coloured and it stained my pillows and it stained my hairline and it just did all that, I just stopped using it. And that's a shame because the results, unparalleled. The user experience, just not that great. So I understand why this has been discontinued because I think a lot of people had problems with the intense coloration of it. But I also think it's a shame because there's a lot of people out there that really, really love this one. Finally, the Gran Active Retinoids in Squalane. Am I surprised these are going? Absolutely not. They were greasy. You didn't have a great application. Um, I think there's just better products out there. And 
ultimately, I think these fell for hollow the fact that the Ordinary themselves just have a better product. This is the Ordinary Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. A rich, creamy emulsion that sinks in like that. Why would you buy the Ordinary Grand Active Retinoid 2% in Squalling, which is greasy, difficult to sink in, when you can get the exact same strength at the exact same price in a rich, creamy emulsion that's just going to be a dream to apply? You're not. And that's why nobody was buying this, everyone was buying this one. And so I think the Ordinary took a look and thought, what's the point of trying to create both of these? You know, manufacture both of these, sell both of these when everyone just wants this product. And I'm with them on that. Buy this. Forget the ones in Square Lane, not worth it. But this 2% emulsion is an absolute game changer. So they have the lowdown on what's been discontinued. And I would love to know, are any of these your favourites? Are you sad to see any of them go? The Ordinary are teasing a couple of new product launches this year. And I'm, I'm here to tell you I'm excited because the rest of their launches have been phenomenal. I'm excited for this. I've actually been invited to a little bit of a webinar to sort of share their latest product launch at the start of February. Um, so I can't wait. I can't wait to join that and hear about it. I have no idea what it is. I know nothing. and I am super excited for this. And of course, as soon as I'm able to share it with you guys, you will be the first to know. But a couple of the teasers um, that I'm hearing is, again, I think we're going down that multi-active formulation, which is really popular now, which I love to see. You know, obviously in keeping with the ordinary price point, which I love. So I think there's some great new launches coming down the line. Does it kind of make sense to clear the decks and get rid of some of your lower selling products to launch new ones? Absolutely. Nobody wants a cluttered website. Nobody wants to have to manufacture products that no one's really buying or enjoying. I get that. But I also think you've got to manage this correctly because a lot of people will still like the products that have been discontinued. So I would say, hopefully in this video, I've been able to explain what is and isn't being, isn't been taking out the collection. Um, the highlight the fact you, if you love any of the products that we discontinued, there's a sale on now. They're all linked in the description box. Fill your boots while you can, because why not? And to say to the audience, I think they have actually listened to feedback, being transparent with what's being discontinued and giving people the opportunity to buy them rather than just scrapping them. Saves on waste, protects the environment because you've already produced these products and gives us the consumer a little bit of a saving. So what's not to love about that? Hopefully this has put your mind at rest and you hopefully know that some of your favourites aren't being discontinued. But let me know in the comments section below, like I said, what your thoughts and opinions are wherever you are in the world, guys. Stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.